So, everybody knows about how France's revolution started in 1789 and how it shaped Europe for centuries to come. And many know that Belgium, the country just above France, didn't exist in any form before the 19th century. But, did you know, differently from what you might have known before, that the first country known as Belgium did not get created in the 19th century, but that, in reality, almost simultaneously to the French Revolution, a Belgian Revolution took place. Today, we will be looking at the causes and the effects of the Brabant Revolution of 1789, and the making of the first Belgian state. The Austrian Netherlands was a territory which covered much of what is today Belgium and Luxembourg. Despite it being considered a part of the greater region of the Netherlands, this territory was majority Catholic and had been in Austrian control since 1714, when the Spanish transferred it to the Austrians at the end of the Spanish War of Succession. In the second half of the 18th century, Joseph II von Habsburg, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and ruler of Austria, and consequently the Austrian Netherlands, came into power. He had been greatly influenced by the Enlightenment and its ideals. Thus, he was opposed to some of the ultra-Catholic institutions of the Austrian Netherlands, despite them maintaining a legal degree of autonomy from the rest of the Austrian Empire. The decades following his ascension to the throne would see him launching a number of radical reforms, which included, at first, the abolition of the Catholic majority's privileges compared to the other religious groups through the Edict of Tolerance, then he fought for the right of marriage being a civil institution and not a religious one, as well as abolishing enclosed religious monasteries. Finally, he started tampering with the economic and religious organization of the Austrian Netherlands, chipping away at their autonomy by removing tariffs, reforming schools, and breaking up the ancient government structures that guaranteed the region's autonomy. The continuous and fast-paced changes that Joseph II had been making to the society of the Austrian Netherlands had stirred up anti-Austrian sentiments throughout all the strata of society, which would soon coalesce into a real independence movement. It all began with a series of intense riots in 1787, called a small revolution by historians, coupled with rising political opposition to foreign rule. Popular opposition was centered on the provincial states, in particular Hainaut, Brabant and Flanders. The riots were quickly put down, but it wasn't long till the rebels started calling themselves patriots, establishing national symbols like cockade of black, yellow and red, which would later become the national colors of Belgium, and rallying the masses against the Austrians. Seeing the discontent rise to such an unprecedented rate, His Majesty Joseph II decided to repeal the economic and political reforms, but he left the religious ones in place, as he hoped, at least, the latter would have been appreciated by the pro-enlightenment circles of the Austrian Netherlands. Instead, opposition grew, with figures like van der Noot, a lawyer that had expressed to the public his visions towards Austrian authority, coming to the Dutch Republic to organize and form revolutionary armies. In 1789, all the branches of opposition united, with the help of the Brabantian clergy, into the Brabant Patriot Committee, which established October 1789 as the date of the revolution. The Brabant Revolution broke out on October the 24th, when the Patriot Army that had been prepared by Van der Noot crossed over the Dutch border into the city of Hoogstraten, where a specially prepared document, the Manifesto of the People of Brabant, was read in the city hall. This manifesto was very similar to the one that was used by the Dutch during their rebellions against the Spanish two centuries prior. The first wave of Belgian-Austrian battles saw an impressive amount of victories for the Patriots that rallied the population to their cause, and that, after the Battle of Gantz, saw the definite success of Patriot forces, now in control of Flanders and Brabant. Finally, the rebels pushed to the south and southeast, capturing Mons and then Brussels on December the 18th, leaving the Austrian forces only in the city of Luxembourg. The consolidation of the territorial gains prompted the rebels to look inwards, and, inspired by the American Revolution, the United Belgian States was officially formed with the Treaty of Union in January of 1790. 
Brussels, the most important recent conquest of the rebels, was made the capital of this new state, as it would host the sovereign congress that would act as a parliament for the new country. While the country was now united militarily and on paper, the political reality was far different. Already, two major groups had emerged. One called the Vonkists, led by Jean-Francois Vonk, who advocated for popular sovereignty and liberalism, and the other called the Statists, that argued in favor of the aristocracy and the clergy, as well as promoted the loose confederation of states, instead of a more consolidated government, led by Van der Noot himself. The two groups would continue the internal fighting, weakening the stability of the United Belgian States. The Statists accused the Vonkists of being just the Belgian version of the French revolutionaries, and hinting that, if the Vonkists were allowed to ascend to power, they would abolish the clergy and the aristocracy as well. This created a large amount of anti-Vonkist sentiment in the upper and lower classes of the population, fermented by the church's influence. First, the Vonkists would be chased away from Brussels by an angry pro-statist mob. Then, when the statists realized that much of Flanders still supported the Vonkists, they would impose a reign of terror persecuting the Vonkists and outlawing them. This led the Vonkists to believe it was better to create a compromise with the Austrians than to be exterminated by the statists. Despite this, the Austrian army was not in the proper shape to face the revolutionaries, as it was mainly opposing the Ottomans and the Balkans, and the Emperor Joseph II had fallen ill, stagnating the situation. On the other part, the United Belgian states knew it didn't have the capacity to withstand the Austrian forces, and so tried to gain support from the neighboring powers of Prussia and the Netherlands. Yet, neither of them could help. Prussia, while sympathetic to the Belgian cause, was forced to retreat their offer to help by the British and the Austrians. Once Joseph II died, his son Leopold came to the throne, and after piecing out the Ottoman Empire and arranging an agreement with the Prussians, he led an army of 30,000 men into the United States of Belgium to reintegrate the rebellious provinces. With the Vonkists, the Austrians agreed to amnesty in exchange for immediate surrender. Thus, war was back in the Austrian Netherlands, as the Austrian and Belgian armies fought each other in the Battle of Falmagne, which resulted in a decisive Austrian victory. Soon, the least rebellious provinces of the United Belgian states started to surrender to the Austrians, like Hainaut and Flanders. Then, Namur and South Brabant were captured, and finally, Brussels itself surrendered to the Austrian forces. Thus, by the end of December 1790, the United Belgian states were no more, and the Austrian Netherlands returned into Austrian hands. But, Despite winning the war, the Austrians realized that the Belgians would not easily accept their rule again. So, they decided to revoke all the reforms Joseph II had made to the Austrian Netherlands during his reign. So, the new emperor, Leopold II von Habsburg, gained some level of popularity in the Austrian Netherlands, but the status quo would not last for long, as the territory would be soon occupied and annexed by the French Republic during the French Revolutionary Wars. That is how the story of the Brabant Revolution and the United Belgian States ends. If you liked this video and you found it interesting, subscribe to the channel for similar contents. Comment and like too, to increase the algorithm's preparation of this video.